Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper, David O. Russell, Robert De Niro. Can't get enough of this team? Or is it too much already? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Joy. think that the world owes you anything because it doesn't a lot of actors who became movie stars have a director to thank Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese Johnny Depp and Tim Burton George Clooney and Steven Soderbergh Brad Pitt and David Fincher even Jimmy Stewart and Frank Capra yet interestingly perhaps the only actress before Jennifer Lawrence and David O. Russell to team up with a director was Grace Kelly with Alfred Hitchcock. Kelly also won an Oscar early on in her career, and perhaps she might have become the queen of Hollywood as Lawrence has if she hadn't decided to become actual royalty instead. Yet Lawrence is so pervasive these days in pop culture, it's easy to forget that her career has only just begun, with Winter's Bone in 2010. Like the girl on fire that has become her signature role, Lawrence's career exploded with two franchises and her collaborations with the fiery tempered O'Russell, who has grabbed onto Lawrence like the lifeline she was to his floundering career, which had imploded after footage of him yelling at Lily Tomlin surfaced online. But Lawrence's own lifeline, The Hunger Games, is now done, at least for her, and now it's time to see just how important that franchise was and is to her career. Lawrence has bet big that it wasn't that important at all, or perhaps it's cleverly spreading across Hollywood like wildfire before it becomes evident that it was. She's writing a movie with Amy Schumer. She's directing a movie. She's starring opposite Chris Pratt. She's signing on to a number of other movies and then dropping some. She's campaigning for equal pay for actresses. And perhaps Lawrence is working so hard because an anti-Lawrence backlash does seem to be lingering. The Hunger Games franchise ended on a sour note box office wise and to some fans also creatively. Advertising for X-Men Apocalypse seems to indicate that Lawrence has successfully lobbied to spend less time in full body makeup, a process she was very vocally against. Despite fans love of that version of the character, not to mention how the character has been developed on screen story wise. And speaking of being vocal, Lawrence has not been shy about saying she will only return to the X-Men franchise if the paycheck is big enough. So as Lawrence takes center stage with Joy, ironically a movie about women in business, everyone in Hollywood is watching to see if she can carry a film where she's the one and only draw. And speaking of irony, Joy was originally written by Bridesmaids co-writer Annie Momolo about real-life female entrepreneur Joy Mangano. But when O. Russell came on board, he rewrote much of the script to make it more about female entrepreneurs in general and tried to get Momolo's name taken off the script and film entirely. But the Writers Guild didn't agree and Momolo got a story credit. So I guess Lawrence only fights for some women in Hollywood? I really like this movie, which surprised me for two reasons. The first is that just a few days ago, a BTT viewer had tweeted me with Joy's initial Rotten Tomatoes score when the first wave of reviews came out. And it was at like 53%. And I tweeted back, yikes. Uh, and it's at 59% right now, by the way. So that's a situation that isn't improving too much. So I was nervous going into the press screening. I was like, man, I didn't like The Revenant. Am I not going to like Joy? This is not looking good. And then the other reason that I was surprised that I like this movie so much, I think some of you are going to be like, is it because you don't like Jennifer Lawrence? But I have to say, having now seen uh, Mockingjay Part 2 and this film, I gotta say, I'm coming around a little bit on Jennifer Lawrence. She's just that good of an actress, and we'll talk about her a little later on. But the first third of this movie is absolutely horrible, like almost unwatchable, and that's all David O. Russell's fault. I understand why they had to set it up the way that they did after having seen the film, but man, talk about hindsight being 2020. I mean, when you're going through it for the first time, you're like, why are you torturing me like this, David O. Russell? Jennifer Lawrence, how do you not know that this is just so hard to sit through? It's totally over-directed and overwritten. It's too cute, it's too blunt, and it is super feminist, which is weird because I don't think it's a feminist film. Now, also, it has a very unfortunate uh, reliance on 
and depiction on guns. You know, it's cringeworthy. They open up with this scene talking about how guns make you powerful. I don't want to give too much away. And I was just like, that's a really horrible thing to put out there into the environment, into the into the uh, society, considering what we're dealing with right now. How about you not put that in a movie? Although some people, you know, obviously that's why we're having the debate. We'll say that guns do make you powerful, but I just felt it was an irresponsible thing to put into the movie, and it's going to turn some people off. Now, speaking of things we debate, one of them is often feminism, and feminism rubs people the wrong way, a number of people. It's very divisive. So I think that the beginning of the film is so bad and so feminist that I think that a number of people just never get over that, and that's why the movie's not getting such good reviews. And you might even be wondering, how can I say a movie is great if I didn't like the first third of it? But I'm telling you, the second two thirds are so good, so amazing. Uh, now, as I said, there is some feminism aspects to this that I can see why people would take it as a feminist film. These are my notes here. So it stars a woman, right? So that already gives it a feminist slant right there. Also a very vocal woman these days, as we discussed in the open about, you know, real life women being how they're treated in business. It features mostly women. Uh, also, as I said, at the beginning of the movie, there are some lines that are just like nails on a chalkboard feminism, a little bit like Supergirl, which turned people off of that show, which is also a very good show. So, you know, what are we learning here? Radical feminism is not a good way to get people to listen to your message, which is actually kind of, you know, the situation with every everything you're trying to promote. When you radicalize it, people stop paying attention. And, and you know, well, that's a whole different conversation. But anyway, also, they give Joy, Jennifer Lawrence's character, two children. And she has a daughter and a son. And she pays so little attention to that son, you actually watch the movie and you're like, why did you even give her a son just so she could ignore him? It seemed, it's just, you know, you've actually, for a moment while I was watching the movie, particularly when I wasn't enjoying it, I was like, I feel so bad for that little boy. He probably thinks his mother doesn't care about him. What's, what's his life like? What's he going to grow up to be? You know, there's a movie for you. And maybe, uh, you know, as people talk more and more about maybe some, you know, young boys being left behind in the school system with such a strong approach on feminism, maybe someday we'll get that movie. But this isn't it. So... The thing is, though, is that once the movie really hits its stride and actually starts talking about business, these are things that apply to everyone, men and women, because the qualities and weaknesses that Joy possesses and the things that she does throughout the course of the film, anyone can do. They're not women specific. Sure, it's nice to see a woman doing it. I think that's important. But I think that if, if only women were to listen to this film and to take important lessons that it features away from the film, that would be a real loss to men. Because like, as I said, there are some really wonderful things in this movie, the second two thirds. So here's my list. An incredibly accurate depiction of business. Like, wow. Like the ups and downs, how cutthroat it is, how stupid people can be to your detriment. I mean, I thought that was wonderful. You rarely see that depicted uh, in entertainment and, and, you know, in the mainstream. It's like the dirty secret of business. Don't tell anyone how horrible it is. Uh, it is. But I think on the flip side, I think this movie also shows that you just have to keep yourself alive. You know, you just have to keep going, keep fighting. Just don't let, you know, your the flame of your idea and your ambition be snuffed out because as long as you can keep that just keep the embers glowing there's a chance so I thought that was excellent uh, also the only person who cares about what happens to you ultimately is you so the only person who's gonna save you is you everyone else will offer you a nice apology a pat on the back but they don't really care they're just gonna just feel sorry for you if you want something done if you want to accomplish something it's gonna have to be you I thought that was incredibly good also help that being said help can come from surprising places and people. I thought that was wonderful to include that in the film. Uh, you know, don't close doors because you never know when you might want to walk through them. Also, hate is not worth the cost. Wow, that's a powerful message and it really struck home with me. I think sometimes we all can get upset with someone or someone and be just like, oh, I'm done. Um, and, but it just consumes you. And I think this movie did a wonderful job of showing that. But at the same time, don't let hate consume you, but don't let it also, in an effort to not hate, you know, be stupid and let your guard down. You know, love what with one eye open. So that was really good, too. I also felt that, you know, while David O. Russell, I feel, mostly got in this movie's way, and I'm very curious, actually, to what Annie Mumolo wrote, although I think he has some good artistic flourishes that he adds here, but I think as much good as he puts into the film, he also puts the, an equal amount of bad. So for David O. Russell, he breaks even. But the acting is very, very good. Jennifer Lawrence, 
so amazing. I was so impressed with her performance. And I think that she doesn't really do anything new here. I mean, we know Jennifer Lawrence can do this. I think it's more important that the movie itself exists. So I don't really see her getting a win. Maybe a nomination because the actress categories are always light on contenders. Uh, and I think she would deserve a nomination. She's very good here. Uh, but I just don't think that this is something where you see new ground broken by Jennifer Lawrence. So while I wouldn't necessarily give her an award for her performance, I have to commend her on her continued ability to portray just a person. You know, so often when you see women in entertainment, they project like this facade, right? Like who they want you to see them as or who they think you want, that you want them to be. But that's not what Jennifer Lawrence does. And I think that's why she connects with her fan base so strongly. And I think why she's so important, because I hope, think hopefully she'll inspire that from other people in entertainment and for, pe for people in real life and how to act. So I thought that was great. Also, Bradley Cooper. We were all like, Bradley Cooper, get out of this movie. We're sick and tired of seeing you next to Jennifer Lawrence but he was so good. He doesn't have a big part, but everybody should watch his scenes. It's like a little mini business school. I was really impressed. He did such a good job. The advice that he gives and the viewpoint that he gives is just perfect. Uh, and then Edgar Ramirez, you know, whose character started out so annoying. You were just like, wow, he's a, you can just tell he's a disaster, you know? But I think that as the movie went on and you start, you came to understand his actual relationship, his character with Jennifer Lawrence, it was really kind of a beautiful thing that I think was really sophisticated and realistic to the situation that many people find themselves in. And I think the hate situation and help from surprising places lessons came through his character. And I really, I just, I thought it was... I thought it was great. I don't want to give anything away, but I just I was really impressed. And then I also have to discuss Melissa Rivers. Uh, Melissa Rivers shows up in this movie playing her mother, and I thought, you know, usually you might, you know, cringe at something like that, but I thought it was a really wonderful ode to Joan. I, we all know how close Melissa and her mother were, and I thought that Melissa did her mother really proud and was allowed her mother to be recognized for what she contributed to home shopping and to women business, you know, one of the first, you know, big uh, women business figures. So really wonderful. And I really loved that part of the movie. It was small, but it really made an impression. I thought that was very nice. The rest of the cast is obviously good. It's like Robert De Niro, Isabella Rossellini, but they just became this cloud of annoyance. They were supposed to be, it was by design, but they just kind of, you know, melded into this giant, like, oh, I can understand why Joy is so upset with you. And then finally, I would like to give a shout out that this is yet another movie, which isn't as good as, like, say, The Martian, but it's very good, and that, I guess, was trying to pr pr um, portray an ideal, but this is a very good job of, I think, being honest about the diverse world that we live in and the ways that we maybe interact with um, demographics outside of our, our own, uh, you know, maybe where we're born, or, you know, our neighborhood, but just, you know, and also how business brings people together. I just thought it was nice. I thought, you know, obviously it's not at the level that I think some people would like and we would like to get to, but I thought it was a really nice step in the right direction. So that's how I would describe this movie. I enjoyed the last two thirds. It's a tremendous step in the right direction. Even if it's not fully on the road that we need to be on, I think it's very encouraging and there's a lot to learn. All right, so that's my review of Joy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to discussing the movie with you down below. And you can check out some other episodes right now.